So obviously, I, I was going to ask you if you think trust in media is important, but like obviously you do, um, or you wouldn't be doing all this. So how well, do I do we... it for the money, <laughs> the money and the women. I see. Uh, but uh, how do we, how do we go from where do we go from here? How do we improve? Because like obviously the media is fucking important. It's an important aspect of our society that should be like holding people accountable and investigating things and like it has like an important role within a liberal democratic society like it's it's fucking important but like people don't trust it and they don't trust it for good reasons in many cases like so how the fuck do we fix this look i i i'm old so i'm in my 50s when i started in journalism um i remember this it was like in the 90s, more than half the newspapers became chain owned at that point. It used to be a lot of smaller ownerships. And then now most of the newspapers are chain owned. And what's happening, those are blowing up and people are starting their own nonprofit websites, or whatever. You're doing journal, other people are doing journalism. It used to be, you couldn't just start a newspaper. It was like, like starting a car company. Like you needed printing press and it was just the barrier to entry was awful. I think what's going to happen is that the mainstream media is it's already kind of kind of dissembling and breaking down and um and you have these people just committing acts of journalism and that was journalism at its roots back in the penny press days there was just so much journalism going on i think the the bad thing about that is when i worked at really small newspapers coming up that the publisher was some rich white guy that wouldn't let you write about what was going on if it was his friend in the small community so that was bad however Journalism at its start was a bunch of malcontents that weren't part of the power structure. They had nothing to, to lose by reporting that. So what you have now is, in part of SPJ, and I'm in Florida, and there's this woman that works in a town called Winter Haven. Uh, Winter Gardens, there's two of them. Winter Gardens, I think, is where she is. And uh, the city commission there tried to ban her from, from the meetings, and it was this whole thing, and we defended her. She started that publication. She is not part of the power structure in that community. She covers it. She just cares about it. She's not making a shit ton of money. She's, she wants to make a living, not a killing. More people that do that in whatever niche it is, whether it's gaming or whether it's their community, that was the essence of journalism. And it's harder. You can hate that. You can hate the, that media outlet. But if you see that woman every day, you aren't going to assume that she's a, you know, you're not going to have a conspiracy theory about her because you see her all the time. You see her in publics, um, doing her grocery shopping. And I hate that bitch, but you know that bitch. That's the problem with the gaming press. Like I said, it was such a weird disconnect. They covered gaming and they talked to zero gamers. They talked to developers. They went to conferences and hung out with developers on rooftops and drank with them and didn't talk to their audience at all. That is the problem with the New York Times. I've written columns about the New York Times trying to interview me about topics and how clunky that is when they're trying to call me from New York. Um, I've always said the New York Times is a great job covering New York and a shitty job covering anything outside of that, right? So I hope what happens is that that, ha that spreads more, right? The more that that happens, the better off journalism is. I was, for a few years, managing editor of the world's largest jazz magazine. You've never heard of it. No one listens to jazz. But what's so funny about jazz is you can go to college and get a degree in jazz. Berkeley College of Music, down here at University of Miami can do that. You can graduate with a degree in jazz. It is now a highbrow art form. It started in the whorehouses of New Orleans as a way of playing music that would keep you fucking. Um, by black artists that wouldn't be allowed anywhere else. And it went from that to highbrow stuff. Journalism's done the same thing. Journalism wasn't, journalism was done by malcontents and social rejects who were covering their community, looking for bad things so they like to take down assholes. And now you can go to journalism school at Columbia in New York and pay $50,000 to be a journalist making $50,000. That, that, is, that is a bigger problem. What needs to happen is more people like you doing your own thing. And over time, 
hope people like you would learn, hey, you know what? It's in my greedy self-interest to do things more journalistic because I can preach to the converted. I can, I can do a stream, be opinionated, and have people that agree with my opinion, and I'm going to get topped out at this many subscribers. Or I can do it journalistically, a little more airtight, present both sides of the story, and then more people are going to look at it because now it's just interesting and a little less he said, she said. There's just some data in here. I, I went to the other side. The difference between, I remember at Airplay, at, during the bomb threat, you know, just hanging outside talking to people, and someone asked me, what's the difference between Breitbart and the New York Times are both journalism? I said, that is bullshit. And I said, here's how you know. Go to New York Times, and they actually said the New York Times sucks because they've been wrong about stories and they've actually run corrections. I said, but that's why. That's why the New York Times is a legit source. Go to Breitbart, find the last time they ever issued a correction. When was the last time Breitbart was wrong? Good journalists, if you want to know what a good journalist is, just count up their mistakes. That doesn't mean they're a bad journalist. That means they're a good journalist because they're willing to admit their mistakes. No one's perfect, but God damn it, I don't know how many times I can listen to MSNBC and Fox News and never hear them say they were wrong about anything. If you want to be, if you want your book and and you want to do right by Gamergate, you will do your damnedest to interview people that disagree with everything you say, give them a fair shot, then let just let the conversation continue. Let your listeners, your readers argue back and forth. I see these arguments going on in the in the chat. And through that synthesis over time, you'll have a bigger community because people will realize. There's more going on here. This is the one place I can go to get both sides. It was so weird during Gamergate having to go to KIA, and I forgot the other one. What was the anti Gamergate? Gamer Ghazi. I remember it said some weird name. Yeah, so like I had a toggle between both of those things. And sometimes, like, it was like shuttling a conversation between people. Like, well, KI says this, and then they would, say, and I'd go back to KIA. Well, Amber Gosby said this, and then I have to go back to the, like, Jesus Christ, how come you guys just can't get together and have this conversation? So if you can actually synthesize that conversation, you'll be a fucking rock star. Yeah, I I do have three anti-Gamergate people who've agreed to be interviewed. Two of them are doing text-only interviews, most likely. The third one's doing voice, which, I mean, I feel like the voice ones, it's actually a normal conversation. I feel like that's better for the book. Um, and you're able to ask like follow ups and like guide it rather than be like, oh, I'm responding to a list of questions, which I think is kind of. Tell, tell the people, tell the people, the ones that are doing the text conversation, two things. One, tell them, fine, but I'm going to put in my coverage that you would only respond this way. And two, uh, tell them, tell them they're uh, cowards because they're not talking to you because they're afraid that they. They need time to defend their position, and they're afraid of saying something stupid. Like I'm sure I said five stupid things in this conversation. I did too. <laughs> but, but if you can't defend yourself in real time, you have to wonder: Are you really confident about your position? If you have to, if you have to, if a question is going to flummox you so badly that you have to go research and formulate an answer. How strong is your argument? And what is wrong with being asked a question and saying, you know what's a really good question? I don't know. Like be human. That's the one that that is the one thing that really just got tiresome about Gamergate and anti-Gamergate. Is there was only a handful of people, and the most interesting people were the ones that were like, that would actually say this statement. Huh. I never thought about that. You know how rare that was? Like, no matter what I said, everyone's like, no, it's because of this. It's like, have you ever been wrong? And then if I, what's so funny is if I admitted I was wrong, they're like, <laughs> yeah. like, well, what'd you win? Because I'm in this to learn and I have no horse in this race. I'm not dating any of you. Uh, you don't pay any of my salary. Um, you know, I'm not sleeping with you and I don't get my drugs from you. So I have no, have no problem listening to you and arguing with you and then saying, yeah, you might be right about that. So to me, as a journalist, when I get into stories like this, well, this wasn't really a story, but when I get into situations like this, I most respect the people 
that admit they were wrong. And I always ask some sort of question that gets to that. Like, you know, tell me when you were wrong. In all of Gamergate, I think Alum Bakari was the only guy that was circumspect at any particular point. It was like, well, you know, maybe, maybe this went wrong and maybe that shouldn't have happened. And like, but, it, you know, and then some of the women about the harassment, but they didn't do that. But it's something that they had done, some act of commission that someone did that they're like, yeah, I, sh- I probably shouldn't have posted that. I probably shouldn't have done that. I heard that so rarely. And I hear that so rarely in most stories these days. That is, you know, I think if Gamergate predicted anything, they predicted um, the righteous asshole. Like, you know, that you can, you can, you can talk to so many people that are they're just convinced of their entire worldview. It's airtight and there's no holes in it. I'm in my 50s and I have more doubts now about my view of the world than I did in my 20s. But in Gamergate, I just met a lot of people that were just convinced that they had they were right 100% of the time. And I don't trust people like that. I don't trust politicians like that. I hate politicians for a totally different reason. I hate politicians because they're never fucking wrong. I respect any politician that says, like, oh, they flip-flopped. Well, if they flip-flop because they just wanted to, like, but if they flip-flop because, like, oh, yeah, I was fucking wrong about that. I will vote for them. I will vote for politicians that make mistakes and own up to them. I will like sources that admit they're wrong. And I want to hang out with people that have made some interesting fuck-ups in their life because it is really boring to go drinking with someone who's always right. Yeah, I actually, honesty is like an important thing for me. Um, I've adopted it, it pretty wholeheartedly, I think, in the past year or so. I mean, not that I was like some horrible, like, serial liar before, but I guess I, I, mean, I, guess I kind of was. Like, we all were. Everybody lies all the time, it seems. Um, about like small shit, that doesn't matter. Like, oh, why were you late? Oh, well, uh, I uh, got stuck in traffic. And it's like, no, the real reason is like, I hit the snooze button, you know, or whatever. Like, people lie all the time for stupid reasons. I, I don't want to live my life that way. And I, I was very honest, like maybe too honest. Uh, but I think it was important, actually, that when I made my post about the – originally I was going to do an encyclopedia, not this interview book. I remember that. I remember you doing – yeah, you told me that. But I didn't uh, end up doing that. I, I, because one, I don't want to spend like 10 years of my life on this shit. I want to spend like six months. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I actually, in my post – oh, hang on. That's the wrong post. What? Does it not exist anymore? There's no shot. Okay, here it is. Writing a Gamergate encyclopedia. I went through. I said, I also want to be straightforward about my about my mistakes with Gamergate. While I'd done many successful things with Gamergate, I also did some things that didn't work out. I created the Gamergate Investigatory Commission, which was a fact-finding commission with people on both sides. Uh, then I go on about why that failed. I was I was honest about how I maybe accidentally harassed this guy once actually. Um, I was straight up about that. And the people in my community, you don't like it's 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 interesting too because um, everybody it's weird. Everybody now thinks of me as like this guy who was like super optics focused on GG and was like super uh, super great about like condemning bad actors. And like I think I like generally was. But, like, I actually almost did harass somebody once. Um, I, I, I Two instances, actually. I bring them both up in the thing. One was this guy was uh, this, this like, blogger guy or d- games journalist or whatever. I don't know. It was years ago. He wrote an article about Cuckoo Ruyo. I'm not sure if you interact with him at all. Never heard of him. Okay. He's, he's, he's a big artist. He's, like, an artist. He, uh, he did a bunch of Gamergate art. And this guy was accusing him of being a pedophile because he drew like a 17 year old character, fictional character who's like 17 in this anime and drew her in like a semi sexualized way. And so he wrote this like whole article about how this guy's a pedophile. And I knew the guy and I'm like, well, what the fuck? This is bullshit. So I made a a video, like a hit piece video on the guy. And then I took it down like two days later or maybe like two hours later. It was like really fast. I took it down. I emailed the guy and I sent him an apology. But like, that was like a moment where like, the worst angels of my nature prevailed. Um, Cause he had made some like stupid comment like eight years ago about like where he, and so I was like putting him on blast for the stupid thing he said like eight years ago. 
And this was like eight years ago that I made the video. <laughs> so it was like 16 years ago he made this comment. It's like, you know, it's stupid. I don't think people should operate in the world that way. So I took down the video and I apologized. Um, and then a second time, I almost harassed somebody. Or maybe I did harass them. I don't know. Um, do you remember Helicopter Guy? Yes, I do. Oh, really? Holy shit. You know Helicopter Guy? I don't know him. I just remember it came up. Okay, yeah, he was he was one of the he was the best of the anti gamer gators. So opinions are divided. Some people hate him, some people like him. I like him. I want to talk to him again. I want to interview him. Um, I actually wanted him to to do this project with me and interview people with me, but he's kind of dropped off the face of the earth. Um, oh, but wow. he he was on a live stream with me. I was like super new to Gamergate. Like I just got involved in like 2015. It was uh, spring of 2015. I got involved. Um. And we were doing a live stream together, and I link I leaked the live stream leak to this troll group because I I, I, I thought it'd be funny. I was a stupid kid. I was like 20 years old. Okay, <laughs> I'm like I'm like oh these these trolls want to come on or whatever. I'm gonna leak it there. It'll be funny to see how how this plays out to see how it goes. I didn't know that they were like actual harasser trolls. I thought they were just like joking around, right? And I got so much shit. I almost got like kicked out of Gamergate, basically, insofar as you can be. Like it, so like I know how seriously like we took harassment because like my reputation in GG was like super tarnished for like three months. I almost got banned from from forums discussing this stuff, and just because I I thought it would be funny to like leak the the invite to the Google Google Hangout. That's literally that's which it was a horrible thing. I should have done it, and I apologized publicly and. Helicopter guy forgave me publicly too, to his credit. Um, but like, people would even like for for years later would be like, "Oh, don't talk to Netscape. He's a bad actor." Like that's how seriously people took it. Like my reputation, like was not super great. But like I, when I did the public apology and helicopter guy publicly forgave me and we we made up publicly. Like when that happened, um. I think most people were still on my side, but there was probably like five to 10% of people involved with the movement who hated my fucking guts and thought I was like a, a fucking horrible person because of this. And like, I think that's great. Yeah. I think nothing makes you more sympathetic to, uh, to other people than, than being trash like that. I, I, that's, that's why I hate thin skin journalists, but, um, and that's what, you know, the gamer gate was a good test for me of my beliefs, which is, don't take it personally um because i mean plus it was so over the top it was it wasn't really a threat but like people accusing me are you gonna open a patreon account i'm like i don't even know what that is (laughs) you're just doing this you're doing this to be an e-celeb i'm like is that like an e-cigarette what is that i don't know what that is so but it is interesting for for you know watching people ascribe motives to what you're doing that aren't true, but you can understand where they might draw that conclusion. And usually when they draw conclusions about you, it's not because of what you said. It's the lack of, of stuff you said. It's nature pours the vacuum. And if you, if you don't fill it with information, you don't, you don't stop the flow of information. You start the flow of conspiracy theory. So I wonder how much of Gamergate's misinformation was because there wasn't enough information. You you said that the the people doing the text interviews are cowards, are they they are acting in a cowardly way? Let's say, I yes. to defend them a little bit. One of them is in the chat right now, in the kick chat. One of them is in the kick chat. Uh, is that the uh, one who said I sound like Norm Macdonald? I don't know if that's a no, insult or that was the YouTube. That was the YouTube chat. Um, oh. There's three chats. There's kick chat, YouTube chat, and Twitch chat. Nobody's in Twitch chat though, but there's two people on watching on kick and there's five on youtube uh but miss sonata um she's a public person in, in this i guess she's she's doing a text interview with me and her and one of the other anti-gamergate people like to play devil's advocate like they're the only people willing to talk at all like i you know you could say that like oh they're cowards but like i'd rather them do a text interview i guess than like the radio silence I've gotten from most of the anti-GG people. All right. Well, I, I misunderstood and I, I'll admit that I'm wrong here. If they are, if they are private individuals who don't often talk to the media or talk to anybody, um, 
they just believe something, that's fine. I thought you were interviewing other streamers, other people that have put themselves out there. If you are interviewing, as I did during Gamergate, just people. No, they're ordinary who, people, yeah. Okay, well, so, you know, if you're not a public, I mean, there's actually different laws that apply to libel for public figures and public officials than there is for private citizens. So I will, I will qualify what I said and apologize to them if they are, I didn't, I just spoke without thinking. I just assumed they were like you. These are people that, that are out there in public posting their opinions. Um, but if they're, you know, if they don't have experience speaking, they might be nervous about that. They've never done it. I can understand not wanting to do that. And if in that case, they're private individuals willing to speak to you, they actually deserve credit for that. However, if anybody is doing their own stream and chewing people up and spitting them out, and then they refuse to go on their stream, that is hypocritical and cowardly. Yeah, I agree. And to to their credit, the one person who's doing voice, unless I can convince the others to, which I'd love to do, uh, Miss Sonata, you should do voice too. So should you, uh, the other person. I'm not going to name since you're not public about being part of the project yet. But uh, the one person who is anti-Gamergate and a, like a YouTuber from back then, they don't do YouTube anymore, but they used to. Uh, they are doing voice. So Hannah well, you, know, you might know them. They, yes, I do remember that. Oh my God, that that was... One, one of the streams, I remember that name, yes. Yeah, so, she, look, she went by Char42 a lot back then. To me, I would just tell them and anybody that any chance to be interviewed on any stream, even if two people listen, it's just good skill to have, to be able to, to talk on the fly. I mean, I'm not articulate. I'm, I'm a print person. I'm not in broadcast because obviously I can't talk very well. But... Um, if you if you learn how to do that, that is a skill. It just it makes you more fun at parties, and um, so I would just I would urge anyone to be interviewed live if you could about something. Um, and if it, and if you feel ambushed at a certain point, hang up. Say, look, I I don't I think you know you're ambushing me. I, I got amb the, the last time I actually got ambushed interviewed myself was by BuzzFeed about Gamergate. When when I was doing Airplay, I think the story, I don't know if the story's still up, but BuzzFeed wrote a story about Airplay. And the reporter tried to play me and I said, you don't, I don't play me like this. I know what you're doing. Because it was one of those interviews like, hey, buddy. So what you're doing sounds so interesting. And I'm like, uh-huh. So I, you know, I know he's just going to torpedo me afterwards. And the story was, it was you know, and I had no problem with the story. It's, it's, it was, it was, I just had the problem that ran under BuzzFeed News. It wasn't news. It was his opinion, which is fine. Label it opinion. But um, so I, I, if you feel like you're getting like bullshitted, just say so and hang up. I didn't because I had nothing to lose. But if you've never done this before, uh, I think it's better to, to do the interview live. And if you feel like you're being railroaded, just say that and hang up and not do it at all. But I don't think you would do that anyway. No, thank you. Uh, well, I mean, I used to be like a partisan guy in GG. Like, I was very partisan. Like, I was, like, nice. I wasn't going to, like, harass anybody, obviously. I guess, except for the one time I harassed helicopter guy. But aside from that one incident, which we all agree, agree was, like, horrible. Um, like, I was, like, a really good actor. Like, I would, but I was, I was bad faith. You know, like, I was like, oh, Gamergate is right about everything. Or, you know, uh, you know, I wasn't willing to, like, concede ground where necessary and approach things in... Good faith. Like you, like saying, I don't know is like super great. Like nobody does that. Well, that's why I liked Oliver Campbell so much is that he was definitely opinionated. Um, and you know, those streams went on forever. It wasn't like they were really tight, but he also gave you time to talk and listen. And I don't know that, you know, maybe he wasn't going to change his mind, but he was willing to let you try. And I just always appreciated that for as strident as he was, um, you know, and even Sargon, um, like, I don't know what he's up to now, but, you know, that conversation was very respectful and polite. So, 
um, you know, I, I, I think it's possible. I think, I mean, I think, you know, like I was, I, I had this conversation with David Pakman about like, you know, the shit you get for trying to, to be down the middle. Um, and it's, it's true. It's like, if you do your job, right. My dad was an umpire for a little league when I was really young. And, uh, I would get really upset because the coaches would yell at him. And I remember he always told me, he said, son, it's, as long as both coaches are yelling at me, it's okay. And that's the same thing about journalists. As long as both sides are yelling at you, fine. And that's why I appreciated Oliver is that um, he was very opinionated. He, was, he didn't hide it, but he also didn't railroad you. And there must have been a great urge to do that because when you when you believe something that strongly to let people talk who don't agree with you, that is not an easy thing to do. And a lot of people can't do it. And if you can, that's a real big skill.